In the last episode, we found the broad representation of Chinese democracy. But how does that turn into a real expression of public opinion? Well, in this episode, we'll continue to find the answer. And an Australian commentator, Jerry Gray, will join me in South China's Guangdong province. All right, before we start our journey, I have a question for you. Okay. What is the role of people in democracy in Western countries? I think the role of people is just to vote, nothing more. Well, you know, in China, democracy is pronounced as mintri, yes. you probably know that, yeah, which means people to rule or people are, are the masters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not the same in the West. Um, I've seen how it works in rural China, and I'd love to see how it works in the city. The first lawmaker we'll meet today is Mi Shimei. She came to Zhongshan City some 20 years ago as a migrant worker, and she has been a deputy to the National People's Congress for five years. Wow, that's impressive. Exactly, and I believe that her close contact with the people will probably impress you more. Oh, I'm looking forward to meeting her. Hello, 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 hello. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, 代表，它不仅仅是说一种职务、一种光环，它更多的是是本身的一种责任，就是要代表一个群体去完成和行使他们这种职责的。最重要的事情不仅仅是你要提建议、意见，然后你还要去，就是说参与到各行各业里面，了解更多的才能了解。Does she have to go to the people and ask them, or do people come to her with suggestions? 你看到一些社会现状。你就会去问，问着当事人或者问相关的人。你作为一个代表，身份变了之后，你就会关注这些案例，他可能所有的抱怨、所有的问题就谈给你听。所以这个时候呢，你就是吸收很多你自己不想、不知道的问题。那我们人大代表有基层联络点，呃，跟代表对话的就是联系代表的，然后有人值班，就是听听人民群众心声的。May's proposal to streamline the enrollment requirements for migrant workers' children was adopted by China's Ministry of Education. I first, uh, also is a foreign worker representative. I'm concerned about the foreign workers' children's education issue. Because actually, foreign workers are a very large group. If they can develop in our Guangdong, we can say that first, we need to solve their housing issues. Because I myself am a mother of a child. 知道这个孩子成长过程，还有他的一个教育。那我站在他们的立场，我更了解他们需求什么，所以我正好这也是这个身份，我感觉到可能这份工作或者这个建议由我来提，更适合不过了。当时是这么想的。I think it's really interesting how Miss Me and people like her stay in touch with the people they started with and listen to their concerns. And then as the deputy, she can take those concerns to the NPC. Mm -hmm. That's impressive. It, indeed. And I think one difference about Chinese lawmakers is that they do not work as full-time lawmakers. They still continue their jobs and careers. And many of them take advantage of this to understand people's needs. And it's actually the same with political advisors. Wow, it would be interesting to meet a political advisor. Yeah. Do you think that's possible? Why not? Dr. Zhou is a political advisor or a member of the National Committee of the CPPCC. The CPPCC serves as a key mechanism for multi-party cooperation and political consultation under the leadership of the Communist Party of China and a major manifestation of socialist democracy. When we met her, she was having phone conversations with the director of a county-level hospital in Sichuan province and a relative of a previous patient of her to find out their needs. As a CPPCC member, do you have any proposals for this year to take to the meeting? I'm completely in the hospital. My thoughts and what I want to solve are all from the hospital. We also get a lot of patients from the hospital. I think one thing is why he doesn't have to go to his house. Why do you have to go to his house? My goal of this year is to 
呃，说的通俗一点啊，就是如何让恶性肿瘤的患者能够实现在家门口诊治。我们要实现一个更好的分级诊疗，但是在分级诊疗的基础上呢，又能够实现无论他在哪个医院级别的诊疗都能够同质化、一体化，哦，最终实现能够让少一点的病人去这样的去奔波，在当地就接受到最好的治疗。And that is one thing we've noticed in China, the life expectancy has increased and it was, it's only increased because of better health management and she's part of that. It was really interesting to meet with her and, and see how she works on a day-to-day -day basis. I think, I think I've come up with or have more clues about how it is that uh, political advisors and lawmakers come up with so many good proposals and suggestions. Yes. It's because they have so many ways to talk to their local community, they're mm -hmm. involved in their local community. You're right. And I think that's not the whole picture. Actually, various forms of grassroots consultative democracy also play a vital role. So now we are going to visit a grassroots contact station where local people discuss okay. issues with lawmakers and political advisors. Chen Haiyi, a judge at Guangzhou Intermediate People's Court and a national lawmaker, is a regular visitor to one of such grassroots contact stations. Yeah, 然后转化为可能我提意见建议提议案的一个落脚点 it's a little beyond my expectations that China has so many channels mm -hmm. to solicit public opinion. Uh, in the West, once election season is over, then voters become pretty much irrelevant. To avoid such um, problems, Chinese legislative work is actually taking advantage of uh, the, the proximity to the residents mm. and is carried out at residents' doorstep. Yeah, you have this word Mingju, which is literally people's rule, and democracy on the doorstep is exactly what that is. Mm. People are ruling. And that's why China's democracy is also called people's democracy. Which is a good name for it. Mm -hmm. The Legislative Affairs Commission of the Standing Committee of the MPC has set up 32 legislative outreach offices in all provincial level regions on the Chinese mainland. Standing committees of provincial and municipal people's congresses have established more than 5,500 legislative outreach offices of their own. From late 2012 to mid-2022, public opinion has been solicited on 217 draft laws and more than 3.8 million suggestions have been made by more than 1.2 million people. From late 2012 to mid-2022, the National Committee of the CPPCC received more than 58,000 proposals and filed more than 47,000 pieces.